I don't know about you guys, but I am so ready for this 300ZX to be sitting right. I have been eagerly awaiting this box to show up. Well, actually, I picked it up, and I'll show you what's inside. Four more boxes. No, but actually, Z32 rears and S13 fronts. These are stance coilovers from TF Works, and they are honestly the best on the market. We'll go into why later, and if you want to see how these are made, let me know. Maybe I'll try and make a video of that. While I'm installing the coilovers on the car, there's a few other things I need to do while I'm under the car. We have new rack bushings. These are poly and they're red, so you know it's gonna be fast. GK Tech tension arms. Now there's an upgrade I'm gonna do to increase the longevity of these. I'll show you that part when we get there. And also an oil change. Can you believe we've driven over 3,000 miles in one month on this car? Insane. And you may be wondering why I have S13 front coils and Z32 rear coils for a 300ZX. And that's because in the last video, we left off with converting the front suspension to utilize S13 suspension. So we welded in some top hats, and a lot of people were not a fan of my fitment because I have positive camber, you know, changing things up. It's like an anti-stance car at this point. I did this conversion for better steering geometry for drifting. It's not that the stock Z suspension was bad in any way, it was just not gonna serve the purpose that I wanted to use the car for. And that is why I have these spare control arms. I mentioned in the last video I wanted to extend a pair of control arms to correct that positive camber, but before I do that, I'm going to slam the car to the fitment I like because I think that the fact that it's raised so high has to do with why it's positive. Because when you lower a car, it will naturally have negative camber. This will probably be my last time jacking the car up directly from the subframe without using any wooden blocks to drive on. I'm ready for the low life problems. Now there is quite a bit going on in this wheel well right now. We have blown S14 coilovers. These are Tien or Tyne? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I always hear someone say it differently. It's T-E-I-N. I don't know, whatever that brand is, they're blown. From an S14, S13 knuckle, Z32 tension arm, Z32 lower control arm, and obviously Z32 brakes. Another thing is this coilover has no top head adjustment, whereas the stance coils have quite a bit of adjustment for camber. While we have all this room in here, I'm going to replace the tension arm first because this is usually the hardest link to install and line up these two bolts to the control arm. Now for the upgrades on the tension arms. So first thing I like to do with these arms is spin out the outer fitting. Spin off the locking washer and lock nut and then spin them onto this Aurora bearing. These are military grade spherical bearings and they're also reverse thread. The part number is VCAB-12. Thread it back into the arm. Now what I do is match the length from the old tension arm to the new one. So it looks like we're gonna have to extend it. See how it's lengthening both sides equally. And then we'll snug up the jam nut and then spin the secondary jam nut. And it looks like there's an Allen key adjustment in the back. That's new, that wasn't on the old version of these arms. The 240 has the old version. And to save time, I evened out both of the tension arms to about the same distance. Last but not least, we'll take off the fittings. Put them on here. Now these arms go on one way and the bushings go on one way as well. The point of the angled tension arm is to get more angle or more turning radius. It's notched out because that's where the tire is now gonna sit. And as for the bushings, you put the bigger spacer on the left side because that is ultimately gonna push the arm farther in, even farther in. If you have it shorter, then obviously it'll be farther towards the wheel. We wanna push it away from the wheel. Normally when you're tightening arms on the car, if they have a bushing on the inside, you wanna make sure that before you tighten it, the weight of the car is actually pushing the suspension up. Otherwise the bushings will prematurely fail. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter because this is spherical. The most important thing you wanna do is make sure that the spherical bearing is lateral up and down. So what you wanna do is wait to tighten the jam nuts all the way until the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension. Now one of the first things I like to do is lower the coil over basically as far as it can go. Try not to let it hit the ground so it doesn't damage it. Start by spinning up the locking collar. Ah, nice and new, nice and free. Now you don't want to adjust the preload on the spring because that is predetermined. Then we'll spin down the mount all the way to the base. Now I think we're going to have to trim some of the top hat, if you guys remember. Yeah, we're going to have to trim the back of it. Our trusty blue marker.
Have you guys ever cut brand new coilovers? Got a nice little edge on it now. Nice and protected, still fresh. Right, let's test fit this now. Now I also didn't want to use the jank spare hardware I had to mount these coilovers because they were just lug nuts and random bolts. Nothing wrong with these bolts, but the lug nuts was kind of on the iffy side. So I went to the hardware store and got some 10.9 grade nuts and bolts, and these look great. This is how high we're gonna need to raise the knuckle. I might need to bring the jack up. Yep. There we go. So we just push in the knuckle, line up the holes. Now remember, these coilovers have an additional negative camber or positive camber adjustment just by pushing in or out. So before you tighten it, you better decide. I'm gonna go max negative. We are ready to test fit a wheel. I'm really hoping it'll fit in the wheel well. It's pretty low already. Hmm, do I make the coilover lower or do I wait for the suspension to settle a bit? Fun fact, the stock 300ZX brake lines line up perfectly to fit into the brake line mount on the coilover with the clip installed too. No binding, nothing. Let's start doing the other side. It's already done. Well, in that case, let's throw on the rack bushings before we drain the oil so we don't get oil everywhere. So it looks like in order to take off the rack, we have to take off the bolts in between here and here. And thank God I cut this hole out when I relocated the rack and notched it for the oil pan clearance because that is the access to that hole and the back one. Floppy little thing. This one's gonna be difficult to get out. Oh, that's gonna be hard to get on. These were not as bad as I thought they would be. This one was pretty thin and flimsy though. But usually this one's toast. Old, new, old, and then there's two new options. The S14 rack is the same diameter as the Z32, and this is the S13 rack diameter. It's much smaller. Unless it's the other way around, I can't remember. But either way, the kit will come with both bushings. I always like to start these by hand because if you end up cross-threading one of these, it'll be a bad time. But we got them started, so we can wrap them on. That was pretty easy. Let's start draining the oil and taking off the oil filter. Ooh, it's dark. Nothing shiny, really. I still can't believe I drove over 3,000 miles in one month. How many miles do you guys drive in a month? Been off the oil filter real quick. These just make such a mess. See if the magnet got anything. Looks like there's a little bit of debris, but nothing too crazy. Yeah, that's fine. That's ultimately why I got the Nismo drain bolt, because it comes with a magnet. Yes, I do use a funnel because I have the worst aim. Now, since an oil change is a maintenance item, I'm gonna write it down in my log. Date, mileage, what you did. At this point, I can slap on the front wheels, drop the front, and start doing the rear coils. <sighs> I'm excited to see it on the ground. I am gonna have to do an alignment on the car once I get the wheels installed, but just getting the ride height and fitment dialed in is gonna be so exciting. I will definitely need to put a smaller tire in the front eventually. That's gonna rub like no other. Fitment's looking a lot better, that's for sure. All right, let's slam the rear now. I think I'm gonna turn the car around first. Oh man, is this going to be our first scrape out of the driveway? Not too bad. Oh my god, this is not even drivable. Uh, the joys of being low. 
Technically doing the rear coils should be a lot easier because it's only three bolts and I don't have to put any extra arms on or any extra bushings at this time. Eventually I do want to refresh all the rear end, but one thing at a time, right? All right, so this is very accessible. Oh, thank God that came out. You never know with these old crusty cars, sometimes the bolt will get stuck in the bushing. If you have a 90s Honda, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's find where those top two bolts are. Hmm. My guess is right here. Ah, I wanna delete this eventually. Oh my gosh, you have to take off the rear panels too because this panel is underneath it. Okay, so completely disassembled the rear interior. Now I have access to this bolt. Oh my gosh, is there more? Don't tell me you have to take out the seats. Oh, there's a bolt under the seat. Why, Nissan? Can we squeeze this in there? There we go. More? I swear, this is the only two-door performance car that I know of that does not have rear shock tower caps. Usually you can just remove a little piece here and then just get full access to it. <sighs> something about the 300ZX, they're like, no. Everything needs to come apart if you wanna work on something on this car. So I think technically you're supposed to take off this B-pillar trim, which means you'd have to take off the shocks for the trunk, and that ain't happening. I'm gonna see if I can just get to it from here. There we go. All of that work just to get here. Wow, these are 12s. Usually they're 14s. What are we stuck on? We need to pry this off. There we go. Oh my gosh, I just realized this subframe bushing is leaking. I didn't know these were fluid filled. Did you guys know that? Now the question is, how low do we go? We'll go a significant amount. I'm not sure I want to slam this all the way up. Carefully slide this through. I'm going to install it on the top first. Now we gotta jack it up. Perfect. Now since this lower mount is being secured to a bushing, I am going to raise the jack so that there's weight on the suspension. Because again, if you tighten it with no load, it'll fail prematurely. Tighten up the tops. Something I just remembered is how crusty these rear sway bar link bushings are. So I have some new energy ones I want to throw on. There we go. Got the old crusty ones out of there. Now let's decide what wheels we want to throw on the rear. I did recently pick up these RG2s, but these are 18 by 10. I think these are going to be too big. We can still try them out. I do have the Eurus 17 by 9.5 plus 15. I also think those are going to be too big, but we'll try them out. And unfortunately, the bell sides do not hold air, so they need to be rebuilt. But just out of curiosity, I really want to see how these RG2s look. These tires are shot, so I will not be able to run these. Now that's hot. Definitely gonna need to roll the quarter panels. Whew, that's gonna rub. Next, let's try the Urus. Maybe that'll fit. <laughs> that fits like the same. This one just needs a smaller tire, I think. Same issue. Definitely gonna rub. Unless I raise it a little bit. Do I wanna do that though? Man, that looks so good. I will admit, I've never done the hammer method before for rolling quarters, but it didn't turn out bad. There's no waves, no dents. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, putting the car on the ground. Also, I'm going to leave the rear suspension all gutted for now because the dampening is on top for the rears. The front dampening adjustment is on the bottom. The stance does that because they don't want to hollow out the tubes, so they keep it one solid piece. You'll see a lot of other manufacturers have the dampening on top. That's actually not a good idea. That's why that's the breaking point in a crash. I have stance coil overs on this car. These are actually the same exact coils from the crash. They did not break. I got hit at this angle right about here. 
The wheel took all the impact and the coilover did not break. Insane. That's another reason I always buy stands. My four-door Integra also has stance coils on it. Now that is hot. Whew. Dude, the chrome on the teal blue green, man. I need to get the front adjusted. Honestly, the tire is too big to run in the front. I might just put those bell sides on and just keep filling them up. It's kind of annoying, but in order to drive it this low, we got too much meat. Well, here it is. This is how it's gonna sit. I definitely am gonna extend my lower control arms. I've already drawn a line for smokes to cut. He has a bandsaw at his house, which I would much rather use instead of using an angle grinder. I could definitely use an angle grinder and get it pretty straight, but if there's a bandsaw available, we're gonna use that. But yeah, this thing is looking hot. Straight out of the 90s or early 2000s. It's crazy what wheels and coils do to a car. I almost wanna take it for a car wash. It's so dusty and dirty. Man, that's good. The fitment in the rear is absolutely perfect. Well, actually, we can probably extend the upper control arm a little bit and reduce the negative camber. But damn, that's good. The front is like zero degrees camber, which is honestly still too positive, which is why I'm gonna have to extend my control arms. I'm curious to see how this thing drives now. Also, I think it's lower than my 240. And another thing is, when you install new coils and new springs, it takes a while for the suspension to settle. So if anything, the car is gonna get even lower than it is now. Start with the speed bump test. Well, we definitely scraped now. Not too bad though. Corner's great, man. That feels good. The car actually feels planted. To celebrate our progress, I got my favorite meal, pad thai tofu, and the car is getting a wash. Guys, I cannot stop taking pictures of this thing. Even with the sunset in the background, it just looks insane. I'm really proud of how far this car has come. And that was only possible because of you guys. From all your likes, comments, and even views. Thank you guys so much. It's crazy to think I found this car as a part out on Facebook Marketplace and then put a junkyard engine, junkyard trans, junkyard interior, all that kind of stuff just to save this car. I'm so grateful for the fan base that has surrounded my content and I can't wait to make more awesome projects like this. This is nowhere near done, but I think we have a pretty good start now. It's also wild to think I haven't even owned this 300ZX for a year. I think I got it last fall. And I found the engine over the winter in the junkyard. Same with the transmission and just been piecing it together and building the car ever since. Shout out to my brother Nate for letting me build it at his house outside and Smokes for helping me fab up the suspension and all the other friends and family who helped make this possible. Thank you guys so much. I'm not sure if I mentioned this bit of information yet, but when I got sideswiped recently and tried to file the claim, they denied it. Well, anyways, I've been battling that and they finally accepted the claim. So now I have an appointment to get the car inspected and get a quote. So that'll be in the next video. I'll take you guys with me and along the journey. As always, thank you guys so much for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like in the video. Subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.